<laughs> Holy shit. Oh man, what is up guys? My name is Nathan. Uh, we're Element of Frost and Bravo. Oh, Bravo AMC. Bravo. That was a spectacular episode last night of The Walking Dead. It was just, it was ridiculous. Uh, before I get into the start of things, this is going to be like, it's, it's going to be a review video of what happened last night on uh, Season 3, Episode 10, Home, The Walking Dead. Uh, so, spoiler alert, and if you have not watched it yet, I uh, suggest you go watch it, uh, then come back, watch this video, show it some love then. Uh, but until then, I recommend you don't watch it unless you don't want, like, if you don't care. Alright, anyway, uh, moving on, guys. Last week's episode of this Walking Dead review show, it was a little on the long side. So, I'm going to try to shorten it down, go through it a little bit quicker, and uh, maybe not put into much detail... Uh, leave some out the, you know, the boring part, stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, so we're just going to review it. So, uh, last night, the episode actually started off again with Rick still kind of going batshit crazy, but at least, you know, not yelling or pulling out his gun or anything like that. But, um, yeah, he resumed with his batshit craziness of actually seeing Lori in her wed wedding dress. And, uh, we established people this is not a ghost, um... I actually watched The Talking Dead last night, and uh, Robert Kirkman said that it wasn't a ghost. Uh, so it's really just a vision of his that he's getting. So, uh, yeah, so it was Lori in her wedding dress, and he actually approached her. She disappeared, then approached her again outside the fence, and uh, they comforted each other. I don't know. Weird visions, man. Weird visions. He got a, he got a snap back into reality. Snap back. I said that weird. He had to snap back into reality, and uh, luckily, later this episode, he does, but uh, not his own, not on his own terms. Let's just say that. So, uh, anyway, the governor back to Woodbury. The governor actually asked Andrea, you know, quote, "I'm not fit to lead these people, but you are." And uh, Andrea, you know, she she kind of understands them, but at the same time. I think there's a little distrust now, now that they, uh, she found out that he had her friends captive. She doesn't really trust them as much as she did anymore. And, uh, she, she kind of takes the responsibility, but at the same time, she's not letting her guard down. And, uh, yeah. So, anyway, and now back to the part where Daryl and Murrow, now, uh, <laughs> man, I love these two guys. They're, they're, uh, incredible actors, um. They do the parts very, very well. And, uh, of course, they're just sitting there bickering in the forest. And uh, Daryl tries to uh, not really lead Merle, but he wants Merle to come with him back to the prison. Uh, because, quote, there's a pot to piss in. Might not be a bad idea. Uh, I thought that was pretty funny. That was pretty funny to, uh, you know, lighten the mood a little bit. And, uh, yeah. So, and now... Back at the prison now, now that, uh, you know, Daryl's gone, Rick's gone batshit crazy somewhere in the forest trying to find Lori or something. Anyway, uh, Glenn actually starts to take charge, and uh, he kind of wants to go with um, Michonne and actually go kill the governor. So, yeah. So after he makes that decision, he pretty much just asks Michonne, he's like, you know where apartment is. And uh, that famous quote that we've been seeing from uh, the season three episode 9, uh, you know, kind of trailer type thing, uh, he was like, talking to Michonne, and he says, you and I could end this tonight, so, uh, anyway, back, back at Woodbury, uh, Andrea actually asks Milton, uh, which was formally confronted by the governor, which he actually asks, uh, Milton to keep tabs on Andrea, because she, he doesn't know where her trust lies, um, so pretty much, Andrea asks Milton for the governor's whereabouts, and uh, Milton just answers her questions with more questions and uh, not giving her a straight answer because he told the governor that uh, he would keep tabs on here and, you know, try not to let her know uh, where he's going, if that made any sense. Uh, but anyway, just keep her kind of out of the mix of things until they find out exactly where her trust lies, loyalties, stuff like that. Um, so, yeah. And now... Uh, back at the prison, we find out that the boiler room is overrun by walkers again from that uh, outside barrier where actually Tyrese and everything got into the prison. Um, the boiler room's full of walkers again, and um, Glenn 
Glenn pretty much uh, says that he will take Maggie and uh, go to the far side of the prison and look for the breach. And Maggie does not want to go with her. Go with him. <laughs> um, she's still mad at Glenn because uh, uh, Glenn thinks that the governor actually raped her. Uh, he was taking it way too seriously, but he did not. The only reason she took her shirt off was obviously because, you know, Glenn was going to lose his hand, if not. So, he's she's just kind of, there's, I don't want to say mad. I mean, sort of mad, but there's just a lot of tension, I guess. And they got to work things out. So, kind of snaps her away and uh, doesn't really want to go with her. Uh, but, yeah. Anyway. And uh, we also find out this episode, Axel doesn't know how to use a weapon. <laughs> doesn't know how to use a weapon. And originally... He got into prison because he tried to rob a convenience store with a squirt gun, people, with a squirt gun. And uh, the police pinned it to him by uh, finding his brother's uh, 22 or whatever in his house. And uh, yeah, so that's the only reason he's in prison. So he's kind of, he's, 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 uh, he's, he's innocent, I, I, I believe, obviously. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, back to Merlin Daryl, they actually find uh, survivors up on a bridge on uh, this Yellow Jacket Creek thing, uh, which formerly Daryl predicted it would be, and uh, Merlin wanted to bet against it, but yep, Merlin's wrong anyway. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, they find survivors, and um, the only reason really Daryl wanted to go was because he actually heard a baby, and obviously that's thinking back to, you know, uh, what's her name? Judith, I think. Uh, thinking back to Judith. A uh, little ass her as he likes to call her. Uh, but yeah, he heard a baby in a car and they were in danger. So he decides to go up and rescue them. And uh, Merle, after the rescue, wants to um, wants to pretty much pretty much take something out of their car. Like take, I guess, resources out of their car after they saved them. Uh, but Daryl actually raises his crossbow on Merle, which I think was pretty cool. He's, uh, you know, taking charge. I know he's the smaller brother, but hey. He can always take charge a little bit. And uh, pretty much told the foreigners to get in the car and leave. And now uh, they're walking away now. And uh, Murrow gets mad at Daryl because he he wanted to take some resources after, uh, you know, after saving the people. So he pretty much confronts Daryl and he was like, so if there wasn't a baby, you would just rescue them and uh, they wouldn't owe you anything, even though you're risking your life, stuff like that. And... Uh, he got mad at Daryl and actually pulled his shirt while Daryl was trying to walk away. His shirt actually ripped, and uh, now we get to see a deeper side of Daryl and Merle, uh, because there were scars actually on Daryl's back, and that's leading back to the abuse that their father gave them. So, uh, previously, as I understand it, uh, Merle actually got abused first before Daryl, um, and Merle actually had to leave. Well, he, I guess he didn't have to leave, but he didn't want to kill his father. Uh, then he just found out now that Daryl was actually getting beat by his father, too, so. Merle's kind of, I guess, a softer side to Merle, I suppose. You know, you don't really get to see much of that, but, uh, yeah. So, Daryl then just, you know, gets on his backpack, everything like that, and tells him he's walking away, and he's like, I'm going back to where I belong. And Merle, uh, I kind of feel for Merle, but at the same time, he kind of deserves it. But at the same time, I like the character so much that I just, I want him to survive. I want him to go with the group. And uh, Merle complains to Daryl that I can't follow him to the prison. And Daryl pretty much just says again, which I think was a really great quote, quote because uh, because of the fact that, like, you know, uh, he's kind of done this when he was a kid and when he was on the roof handcuffed. I mean, that was his fault too, Merle's fault. Uh, Daryl pretty much says, I may be the one walking away, but you're the one that's leaving. So, I think that was pretty cool. Uh, you can still see a bigger side of Daryl now. Uh, he's not taking shit from his brother anymore, which I think is really, really cool. Um, he's kind of being the bigger brother now, I guess, sort of. But, um, anyway, back to the prison now. Herschel actually is confronting Rick, which is outside the prison fence. Mm, which is outside the prison fence. And, uh... Rick actually admits, which I really didn't see this one coming. I mean, I guess he's kind of getting pulled back to reality now that he confesses. Um, he confesses that he's been searing Lori, and he pretty much, he knows that it's not really her, because that's what he actually says, but there's got to be a reason why he's seeing her, and then he he walks back to the forest, pretty much, after uh, he explains all that to Herschel, 
and he's just like, I need some time, and, uh, yeah, just kind of walks away again. So back in the back in the courtyard, this was one of the most shocking parts of last episode, man. It was it was ridiculous. It was completely unexpected, completely unexpected. Um, back in the courtyard, Carol and Axel, which Axel, I was actually starting to you know like the character a lot. The character was actually developing a lot. Uh, we didn't really get to see him in much action, but uh, I really liked the character. He was funny, and. They were talking about how Axel's brother had a money problem, which I thought was a really funny quote. Um, Axel pretty much just like, my brother? No, he had a money problem. And Carol pretty much asked him. He was like, well, what was his problem? <laughs> it made me laugh. This is what they try to do. They try to make you laugh and then get really disappointed. So he was like, what? she was like, what was his money problem? Uh, and Axel was like, he wouldn't lend me any. So I thought that was really funny. Then all of a sudden, he was just like, one time that some bitch starting to start another story, and then suddenly, bullet to the head of Axel, just dead on the spot. Just out of literally nowhere. Never even seen it coming. Never seen the governor coming. Never seen anything. Just a bullet. Just a, just a bullet. I was disappointed at the time, but then I was like, okay, I kind of understand it because, you know, someone had to die on the first attack because many died when they attacked the... Uh, when, when they attacked Woodbury. So, we, uh, they cut to the part where the governor is stationed at the tree line, and, uh, they start literally unloading bullets into the prison. Um, uh, Rick, Rick sees this, he starts to take action, starts to return fire, everybody else does as well. Um, so pretty much we're just having, like, you know, uh, a war on war type thing. Everybody... Uh, that is in the prison is behind the fence and everybody that is in Woodbury is on the other side of the fence shooting in and uh, we're shooting out and uh, the funny thing about it is the person that's supposed to be the leader was also on the outside of the fence because you know he was going batshit tr crazy trying to find Lori and uh, yeah so you know I kind of found it funny but disappointing that Ashley got shot that you know randomly and then he got used as a pin cushion man that thing oh my god Hundreds and hundreds of bullets went into Axel, man. The only reason Carol's still alive is because Carol <laughs> friggin' hid behind Axel's body. It was just, it was ridiculous how much Axel was getting shot. Um, then, out of out of literally nowhere, um, this this truck comes in, sort of like sort of like an ice cream truck, but it's not an ice cream truck, trust me. Uh, but it's like the shape of an ice cream truck, I guess, kind of freezer truck. Uh, rolls in and just drops a big walker bomb just has like so many walkers in the back of this truck and uh, Just they let them all out literally all over the prison field uh, So not only do they have to deal with the governor and his group, but now they have to deal with a bunch of walkers as well um, so Wow when they take the fight to the prison. They really take the fight to the prison people. I'm telling you um, Oh, I'm reading right now. It was actually a bread truck. Okay, cool 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 <laughs> and uh the meanwhile all this was going on the attack on the prison the governor was like standing back having like an orgasm or something man like he was enjoying it so much there was so many weird facial expressions he was go giving it was it was just ridiculous uh pretty much the governor uh actually goes away everybody retreats back um the governor goes away he gets in his car uh, sprays one more clip out and uh, actually leaves the premises of the prison. So now everybody's just dealing with the walkers. And uh, so Rick is actually still outside the fence and he's surrounded by walkers completely out of ammo, out of his python ammo. He's sitting here using his python to bash the walkers' heads in. I'm really glad he didn't drop the python. The python is the best freaking weapon in The Walking Dead right now uh, besides the crossbow. Uh, speaking of crossbow, Rick was actually surrounded by walkers, and, uh, yeah. I don't know if this is a preview come, preview to come, but, uh, Rick's surrounded by walkers outside the prison, he's just holding him off with his hands, he can't even, uh, like, he's holding him off with his hands, he's literally about to get bit, he just, like, is choking two walkers right now, and they're pinning him against the fence, he's about to get bit, and then all of a sudden, a crossbow bolt just goes through the forehead of the, um, Walker that was just about to bite, um, that was just about to bite Rick, crossbow bolt, and, uh, 
then it cuts to the camera, you can see it's Daryl and Merle. And uh, Merle goes up to the remaining walker that's Rick still holding him away from him, stabs him in the face uh, with some sort of metal piping. Uh, so Merle just saved Rick's ass. And so did Daryl, and uh, they continue outside the fence, uh, beating up all the remaining walkers, uh, like, around Rick at the time. And then, uh, pretty much, it just, you know, cuts to sort of a aftermath scene of Rick, Daryl, and Merle just kind of looking into the in through the prison gates, and just seeing all the walkers still in there. And uh, they actually see the remaining people, uh, which, you know, is the whole group, like Carol... Uh, Maggie, Herschel, everybody like that. Um, everybody that didn't die except for Axel. Poor Axel. Poor Axel. Uh, just standing up there, and they're kind of just still standing outside the fence. And, uh, Rick just stares. Rick just stares. And, uh, what I read from his facial expression is, like, they want to bring this? All right, this is war. This is, that's what I got from his expression. Like, he was, you could tell he was getting pissed. And, uh... That's what I was talking about, how he was forcibly snapped back to reality. So hopefully he doesn't see Lori too many times more. And I'm really curious to see uh, when we are actually going to see Morgan. Uh, back from Season 1, Episode 1. Obviously Morgan, the one who actually saved Rick. Well, I guess originally bashed him in the face with a shovel. But <laughs> besides that point, I'm really curious of when we're going to see him. I heard it's going to be Season 3. Hopefully maybe next episode. Who knows? Um, and I'm really wondering about Tyrese and his group. Tyrese, Sasha, Ben, and, uh, that other guy. I forget what his name is. But, uh, anyway, I'm really curious to see where they went. Hopefully they're still in the prison somewhere, maybe in another cell block. Uh, you know, something like that. Uh, because they need them. They need them. They need them now more than ever. Uh, they get Merle and Daryl back now. So, uh, that's pretty sweet. And, uh, Merle, <laughs> let, me, let me just say, they better let Merle back into the prison. Because he just saved Rick's ass. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for this episode, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the review show of The Walking Dead Season 3, Episode 10, Home. And uh, if you did, uh, please hit this up with a like rating. Uh, it took me a while to uh, make and think up what I was actually going to talk about, uh, how I was going to, you know, slow this down, uh, I guess, speed it up, I guess. But anyway, uh, besides that point, anyway, guys, I'm closing in on 400 subscribers. It's an incredible feature. I know it's not very much. Uh, but for my channel, sort of is. So if you don't mind, hit me up with a subscription. I'll be bringing these review shows every week to you guys. And uh, yeah, if you do enjoy them, I have a playlist down in the description. Uh, go check out all the other review shows if you're interested in seeing those. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So I will talk to you guys later on the next video. Peace out, guys.